Hello, uh, good morning, everybody. <coughs> I'm making this uh, video uh, due to my observation about my great uh, seven students. They're not actually very aware about how uh, shedding happens in uh, exoskeleton organisms. So today we'll be talking about exoskeleton and endoskeleton. As I said to you before, I find this material very, very useful. Animal and people have skeletons to protect and support the inner working, uh, workings of the bodies. The muscles uh, attaches themselves to the skeleton to help you to move. Like you can do activities with, uh, with the muscles connecting with the bones. The monkeys can climb the trees, can jump up and down, can turn uh, anywhere due to the fact that they have the muscles connected to the bones. The skeleton gives the bodies uh, shapes, strength, and the ability to bend and twist. Like you all know, if it happens that you don't have a skeleton today, how do you look? Look at like a lump of flesh. But with a skeleton, you're going to have a shape. Animals with exoskeletons have skeletons on the outside of the bodies. You can see exoskeletons, turtles, ants, grasshoppers, and all the insects have exoskeletons. Animals with exoskeletons inside the bodies have endoskeletons. Bony fish like the ocean sunfish and Atlantic blue marley have endoskeleton. So we, I and you, have endoskeleton, a bone to pick. Turtle have an endoskeleton part, of which is adapted into which looks like a bony case. The turtle upper and lower shell functions as an endoskeleton. Now let's take a look at the turtle. The turtle has both the endo and exo. And this is the reason why many of my students have been asking me that is a turtle actually endoskeleton or exoskeleton? From my own observation, I know the turtle used to have the, the neck, the skull, they have, uh, they have the legs, the limbs with skeletons, but the, the outside is being referred to be a shell, to be a shell. And what the shell does is it does the function of the exoskeleton. But in the real sense, if you want to classify the turtle, because we know turtle is put to be in the class of the reptiles. So, and some reptiles will have uh, some shell to cover up the body, which functions like an exos uh, exoskeleton. But actually, they also have the endoskeleton also, like you can see in this picture. So this part of the body, it's, uh, this is the skull, and this is also, this is uh, the, the limbs with the bones, but this too, this and this, perform the function of an uh, exoskeleton. So, and also, no skeleton, no problem. Uh, not all organisms will have a skeleton. Animals, we have some animals with soft bodies. They don't, they don't have any skeleton at all. But these animals, they carry on the normal activities. Like, for example, the octopus, the jellyfish, the earthworm. But what they have is they have water or soil. They, they, you find them living water or soil. So they have a kind of liquid material inside them that helps to protect them against uh, forces from outside. So this is the reason why, although it's without skeleton, water supports its body. It protects itself by bending into, the, into its surrounding, squirting ink to help escape its predators. So all these ways are ways in which they find uh, themselves safe from predators. So, but they have a kind of liquid inside them, which allows them to have a very strong body to carry out their normal activities. Animals with exoskeleton do not have bones. Exoskeletons often have segments. Exoskeleton may be thinner near joints, Segmenting joints help skeletons bend and move easily. Minerals, chitin, and proteins make uh, exoskeleton hard and crunchy. So chitin is a strong material made of sugar bonded together. 
So does not uh, does this insect does this make an insect taste sweet? No. People say raw or roasted insects can taste like a popcorn, popcorn nuts, lemons, or seafood. Some people eat insects today, but actually, it doesn't. The the, the, the fact that you have uh, the chitin, which is a which is made up of sugar, doesn't make them sweet. It only makes them hard. So this is an example of an exoskeleton bug. It looks so hard. You can see how hard the shell is. It's a protective layer for them. And it's called the green gene or beetle. And another example is the crab. The most earth animals have exoskeleton. It means most animals on the earth would have exoskeleton because most animals belong to the group of uh, arthropods. So which is taking a large number of organisms on the earth today. And also animals with exoskeleton live on land and also you can see them in water. Insects, spiders, shrimp, crabs, lobsters, the whole have exoskeletons. It was some mullocks, like clams, do, they do have as a skeleton also. Uh, so scientists estimate that over 3 million different kinds of animals used to have uh, are with a skeleton living on Earth. This is an example of a, of a, a millipede. So you can see the as a skeleton so hard. It looks like a shell, so that prevents it from external forces. So African giant millipedes, many segments allow them to crawl up and turn easily. And also, as a skeleton do not grow, it, it doesn't allow organisms to grow. It allows them to become rigid till the time they molt. So this is the reason why animals molt and grow a new larger exoskeleton. Animals with exoskeletons uh, especially land animals cannot grow very big. The thickness and the weight of a large animal's exoskeleton will limit movement. Now, this is an example of what I'm talking about, about molting. This is a dragonfly. This dragonfly is in a nymph, nymph uh, stage here. In the nymph stage, they don't have a wing. But after some time, you could see it breaks up and now it's coming out from the world from the old nymph, becoming an adult. And when it becomes an adult, it has then the wing, uh, the, the, it becomes, it has wings. So, but before it was wingless, it now becomes a winged uh, uh, fly. So the meaning is that this shell is gonna remain here. It's gonna remain here. No, it's not gonna move away. Because once the dragonfly comes out from it, it has no business with the, with the shell anymore. So this is the way the moat, this is called molting, or we call it shedding. Just after molting, the new exoskeleton is soft for a time until it dries and hardens. The animal is helpless, so it means they're very vulnerable to predators. Predators find freshly molted animals easy to eat. Gauze, strawberries, and sea stars enjoy eating freshly, freshly molted crops. This is an example of man lobster, and it's a very good example of uh, as a, as a skeleton also, you can see how smooth the body is, very hard, like a shell. So one of the largest animals with an exoskeleton is a main lobster. Compare this to the largest animal with the endoskeleton, the blue whale. The blue whale can span a, bus, a basketball uh, court. So that's the reason it's so huge because it, it has an endoskeleton. Animals with endoskeletons have bones, special bones, protect organs like heart and lungs and brain. The amino acids in the bones make them hard, but bones also contain tough fibers to make them strong. Now, the, the skull helps to protect the brain, the rib helps to protect the lungs and the heart, and some delicate organs of the body also. And also, we, the bones, are alive, they're not dead. And some people used to think the bones are dead. No, they're living things and it can grow and kill as needed, compared to the, uh, the exoskeleton. The exoskeleton is comprised, uh, is contained, is made up of sugar, so it's not living, it's dead, but the bones are living, and they heal up if they're broken or if they have a problem, if they've been uh, affected, so, or if they crack, they can heal up themselves. Just like the skin, bones have layers like skin too, the layers we see when we look at the skeleton is called compact bone. You know, the spongy bone, 
the marrow, and also the compact, and which is what you see when you take a look at the skeleton from the, from the outside. And also, we need to know uh, that the bone marrow is a place in the bone where the bone uh, does grow. Uh, so when the, the, the bone marrow is a place in the bone where the cells, cells like the red blood cells, would, uh, would grow, would, would reproduce, and form a new cells in the body. Now, a cast helps to keep a broken bone in the correct position. Because even if you put a cast or not, the bone is going to grow itself. But the problem is, it might grow itself into a, into a very, it might not be straight. So this is the reason why the cast has been, help, has been used to help to put the bone in the correct uh, position. And also animals, uh, animal group with endoskeleton include the reptiles, bony fish, amphibians, mammals. Like this is an example of an endoskeleton. I think this is a skeleton of a snake. Mammals are animals with fur or hair and include people. So we are examples of endoskeleton organism. A funny bone is not a bone at all. When you bump your elbow, you eat a nerve that runs close to the surface of your skin, not a bone. So the number of bones in the endoskeleton varies also with age from one kind of animal to another. The human baby may have around 70 bones and over time, and uh, the bones will not start fusing together. So we have the same number of bones uh, in the neck of a giraffe. I Means the giraffe has a lot of bones in the neck. So this is an example of a bone of human. This is called here, and this is the neck region. This is the rib cage region. So animals have uh, adaptation for the environment we live in. Organisms which are very heavy, we need to have a very what, uh, very thick uh, body layer, so to protect themselves against uh, uh, vulnerable. I mean, to, to prevent themselves from being vulnerable to predators, or uh, from to prevent, protect themselves from uh, predators. Many birds have bones with thin layers and compact bone with hollow cores for easier flight. It allows them to lose weight. So a lightweight bird does not need as much energy to lift itself into the air. So this is an example. This is a reason elephant doesn't need to fly. So the bones are very heavy, but for the birds, they have space between the bones. And that's the reason they can lift themselves and fly off. African elephant bones support weight up to 14,000 pounds, which is much. So between and within each animal group, and the skeleton differ. Animals with similar abilities may have an skeleton that look very different. For example, the birds and bats have wings in both fly, but they, the wings are built slightly different. No matter what kind of skeleton, all skeletons protect our bodies and allow us to move. Because the skeleton of the bat is quite different from that of the bird, but it helps it to move. So once it can fly with it, so it does its job. Bat wings bone support thin, Leathery wings, while the bird wing have muscles and feathers. So this is what differentiates the, the bat's wing from the bird's wing. So now we should be able to do this. Maybe we can work on this by the time we have a lab uh, section. We will need to work on our habitat. We can need to pick up some things from it and we can try to see for ourselves what, we, what the organisms are like that have an exoskeleton and the ones with the skeleton. So, but for now, the things you need to know here is you can you should be able to name animals with endoskeleton. You should also be able to know the heart largest animal with endoskeleton. You should also be able to know how the animals with no skeletons protect themselves. So these are the basic questions you need to know. So before we go, I would like to share a video with you about the way of endoskeleton organisms, about the way the moat by the way, they shed the, the art layer. Now, take a look at this. This is a crab, and it's about to remove the art layer. Now, let's take a look at it. It's good. Now, you can see it's getting out of the old shell, and now coming out, now a new uh, shell as a mate. So, now it's trying to move. So, before you know, the shell hardens, and the old one has been neglected. So this is a snake is trying to change the skin also, but we, can, we cannot call a snake an exoskeleton because it's, 
it does shed only the shell, only the skin, the scale, not the, not the shell. So that's not, we cannot pull that in the skeleton organism, but we see it has shells for protecting the cell. This is an example of an other organism. It's uh, shedding. This is the way it happens. And we're going to get out of it. Then the old shell will be neglected. And at this point in time, they're very vulnerable. Here's another example of a spider, I think. And we'll remove and get out from the old shell. Now another from another new spider with a new the spider with the new shell is formed here. Now uh, it's, it's starts to before after some time the shell becomes hardened and it moves and becomes a new uh, shell for it. There's another example of a spider trying to remove uh, the old shell. That's it. And this is a, a centipede trying to uh, shed the old uh, exoskeleton. You see the white form. So at this point in time, they're very vulnerable, very weak. But again, mm -hmm. and you can see this, this, the shell, I mean the new exoskeleton is very smooth, very soft, and not as brown as the old one. So, but after some time, when the when it receives uh, air, you can see it's very soft. You can see how soft it is. So it becomes hard. And this another this is a, a scorpion trying to shed the uh, skeleton. So it's a huge scorpion. So this is the way it happens. And you can see the color difference a little bit with that. It's another organism, uh, a fly. It's getting out from his old uh, shell, trying to have another one. So at the point in time, they become, they be, you can see they're bigger than the old shell. You can see the size is quite bigger than the old one. So they quickly grow, they quickly increase in size before they become so hard. So, but they, because after that, they don't grow anymore. There's another a worm trying to get out of the shell also. So see the way it's doing that. So, so this is the old shell that's been neglected. So this is all I have for you. And I think this is quite really helpful. And I think after this, you can understand the way uh, I mean, organisms with exoskeleton, the way they shed the outer skeleton. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much.